Senator Kristen Phillips Hill for the 28th Senatorial District in Harrisburg. It represents our local area right here in York County. And good morning, Senator. How are you? Good morning, Gary. It's great to join you and your listeners on this fine Tuesday morning from Harrisburg, and I am not in my pajamas. Oh, very good. Well, it, and, and I know we wouldn't know it anyway in this case, but when you have the visual online learning, I guess it's a little different kind of situation. But, um, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about schools because uh, obviously we're getting close to starting time for schools. In some parts of the country, schools already started. And so there's a lot of questions up in the air. Originally, school districts were given kind of the idea that they'd be able to kind of plan their own programs. Um, and yet the, the the target keeps moving all the time. And I know we've talked to Joel Sears, who's been a member of the York Suburban School Board, about some of the frustrations that school boards are having. What are you hearing as far as education and getting this school year started? And what are your thoughts on that, Senator? Well, you know, I've been keeping in touch with superintendents, school board directors, parents, uh, and community members. And uh, let me tell you this. Um, I had one superintendent really succinctly put it to me like this. Either you trust the public schools or you shut them down. That mm-hmm. was his, his message to the governor. And he said, we're ready to go. Our school districts, in um, they have plans in place both for academics and athletics, and, and they are ready to go. We are hearing great concerns um, from school districts. We had a Senate Majority Policy Committee meeting chaired by Senator Dave Argel and with greater flexibility. And I think we've seen continual frustration from our local school districts that they don't have the flexibility that they need. And so, um, again, either the state's going to make the decisions for them or allow them to make their own local decisions with their locally elected school board. Right. Uh, and having served as a school board director, I trust locally elected school boards to make those decisions. So the legislation that I'm introducing this week is going to eliminate some of the burdensome requirements Pennsylvania has in place that prevents individuals from becoming substitute teachers. And I think that we need to be able to adapt to the situation that we're in, give school districts that flexibility, um, and, and that's exactly what this bill will do. Um, it's going to allow our school districts to be more nimble and address, adjust to those daily needs that they're going to have getting substitute teachers into the classroom. Interesting, interesting stuff. You know, I, I think about, as you were talking, I'm thinking about the way our, our government was set up originally here in this country, and it's a federalistic kind of, of government where we have power that is shared by the states and power that's shared by the, the central government. Well, the same thing holds true for our states. We have power that is shared by the state government and then power that is shared by the local governments and the government governing bodies like school districts. And we can't just go out and say, okay, you come up with a plan for your district because every district is unique of the, what, 503 that we have here in the state of Pennsylvania, whatever the number is right now. And so then we say, well, by the way, maybe not. You know, that, that, that's a mixed message, a mixed bag. And I totally agree with you. I think the local districts know their situation better than a blanket kind of rule that would be thrown down by the state again that would apply to districts that maybe don't have the same circumstances as other districts do right now. You know, for example, Potter County does not have the same situation as Allegheny County or Philadelphia County uh, or some of those where where we have the, the larger urban areas. So this idea that each individual district has to deal with this in their own individual way is not such a bad thing, I don't believe. I completely agree with you. And, again, I, I trust that our, our locally elected school boards can make the best decisions for their school communities. As do I, yeah. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about um, the unemployment situation. I, I continue to read about, um, diff- and we're going to be talking with Seth Grove on this again tomorrow too, who has, has some very pointed views about it. But I, I saw our unemployment rate here in the state right now is 11.3%. I think if I'm up to date in the most recent numbers, compared to a 13.1% number in the state at the moment. 11.3% still not good, but better than maybe the average uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. And yet, I continue to hear about people who have not received their first unemployment check yet. 
Are you still hearing stories like that? And if so, to what degree is it being addressed? Have we gotten better at getting these checks out to people who are sitting out here in York County right now waiting uh, for checks? So what, what extent have we dealt with that so far, Senator? So at this point, what we're hearing is that there are approximately 90,000 people who still have yet to receive an unemployment compensation check. 90,000 may not seem like a, a large number uh, to a listener, but if it was you and, and you had not received a paycheck yeah. or an unemployment compensation check since the beginning uh, of this pandemic when the government unilaterally closed the business that, that you worked for or, or that you owned, um, you know, you'd be pretty upset about it. Mm-hmm. I, I will say this. We are, we are hearing um, less people uh, than we were at about a month and a half, two months ago. You know, there were days when I had over 40 calls uh, in a day to the district office, people just needing help uh, navigating the bureaucracy of the unemployment compensation system. Um, and, and I will tell you that on Monday, it, it, was a, it, it felt really good to get the first call into the district office, and it was a... Uh, a Philadelphia parking ticket issue. And, and I said, this might be a good week, you know, <laughs> right. uh, because we're, we're hearing less and less. And I would say on average, we're now down to about 10 to 20 people a day. Still too many, um, but, but we're starting uh, to see a glimmer of hope. That being said, um, the unemployment compensation system is broken. It has not been well run and, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to fix that. Additionally, right. um, we are now in debt, again, to the federal government. And that's where we were about 10 years ago. Had to do some really creative financial maneuvering to, to get through that debt. Um, privately funded that debt to reduce the amount of interest that taxpayers were paying. And then just at the point where where we were completely solvent again, uh, this happened, and, and we're back in debt to the federal government with our unemployment compensation system. So um, there's a lot of work to be done. We're at 717 on a Tuesday morning. Gary Sutton with you, Mark McKenzie as well. This is WSBA Morning News with Gary Sutton, and we are joined this morning by Senator Kristen Phillips-Hill from the 28th Senatorial District. Uh, before I get to small business in York County, Senator, I wanted to ask you, we had uh, Representative Jesse Topper on this morning, uh, state representative from the 78th Legislative District, and he and Representative Mike Reese will be holding a press conference today at 1130 to discuss legislation to, number one, ensure school decisions are made locally with regard to sports. Last week, of course, the governor coming out and suggesting kind of uh, and hit a lot of people with kind of broadside, including the PIAA, uh, by saying, well, I think we ought to just shut down sports for the you know, until 2021, which would be until January. And then the second part was to allow students to be eligible academically and for sports for an extra year in school uh, if they feel that, for example, they have not been, you know, prepared properly through the online learning and so forth, that maybe they stick around for an extra year, which would also ensure an extra year of eligibility as well. What are your What are your thoughts on, uh, obviously, the one bill you've kind of indicated already, you'd be kind of in favor of the idea that school decisions should be made locally. So we'll, we'll kind of skip that. But the second one, the idea of allowing students to have that option to stick around for a year, because the more people I talk to in education, the more who tell me that maybe this online learning, hey, it's nice, it sounds good, but it ain't the same as being right there in person. Your thoughts about that? Right. Well, you know, I think parents working with uh, the school district, are the best people to make those decisions about their child's academic progress. And I think, you know, Representative Topper's legislation is not only going to assist a parent who has a high schooler who misses a season of football or basketball or baseball or swimming um, and, and want that chance to make their case for a college scholarship, this is also for a parent whose elementary school student fell behind right. during the months after that school building was shut down in March. And if they feel that their child isn't ready to move to the next grade, they also can choose to have their child uh, repeat that grade. So, you know, again, parents 
um, are, are uniquely situated, I think, to make those decisions, working um, with their, their students, teachers, um, and their school district. And, and I certainly would be supportive of that. You know, there, there is a real tug of war when you look at it at the moment where the federal government seems to want to, and I guess this has been this way for, you know, a long time, ever since our history of uh, the Constitution has started, where we have this tug of war over power. Should the federal government be given more power or should we let it to the states? We even have, I think, in our 10th Amendment, those things that are not specifically covered by the Constitution for the central government are left to the states. And it's almost like when you get central power, whether it's in the state of Harrisburg or whether it's in Washington, D.C., that we don't trust individuals who are supposed to be the government to do the right things. I mean, do you sense that that tug of war that's constantly going on in a lot of the legislation that we're seeing now are people fighting back saying, hey, we've got a voice here. We understand our situation better than you do. Let us alone. Let us figure it out, and we'll we'll do the right thing. It's kind of more organic than it is when you contrive things from the state level or the federal level, right? Well, I think, you know, Gary, that in York County, people feel most comfortable with uh, local government making those decisions. Government that's closer to the people uh, works better. And right. so, you know, in large part, look, that's why, um, you know, we've talked about the challenges that our small businesses are facing. And, yes. and I don't think that there's any way to sugarcoat it, Gary, but our small businesses have absolutely been hammered throughout oh. this pandemic. And, and they were completely devastated through no fault of their own. Now, right. at the state level, we've been able to work with our federal counterparts. They've passed federal dollars down through to to state programs, and we've pushed them on to the counties to to distribute those dollars. Um, they're closer to the people, think that they can make better decisions. Uh, just yesterday, the governor announced that there's another round of about $96 million for businesses impacted by the pandemic. We've got the, the COVID-19 relief, Pennsylvania's statewide small business assistance program, giving grants that range between five and 50000 to small businesses that have been economically impacted by COVID-19. If, if you are a small business owner and are listening, you can check into that at dced.pa.gov. And then locally, uh, the York County Economic Alliance has been pushing out information. And I would say to, to listeners, check out preparedyork.com. Um, right. and, and that is getting resources out to small businesses devastated, no fault of their own. And there's a lot of frustration in the community. And, and I think rightfully so, Gary, our, our small businesses have been devastated. And I've received hundreds of emails and calls into the office back in March and April asking, you know, how, why have these large corporate owned big box stores remained open when little local clothing boutiques are closed, mm -hmm. but you can right. buy clothing at Target. And, and you know, um, we have tried to address this legislatively, you know, many bills I've co-sponsored to get our small businesses back on their feet. And, you know, we are still struggling with that. At the end of June, the governor said, and, and I quote his own words, from a, a PA Post article, he said that we would not need to take the same draconian steps that he took at the onset of the pandemic Correct. when it comes to shutting down businesses. Um, since, you know, we know more about the virus now. That's great. Right. Targeted mitigation. And then a couple weeks later in mid-July, he goes out in one of those typical late afternoon press conferences at 3.30, orders all restaurants to go from 50% to 25%. No bars right. could then offer drinks only, indoor venues limited to 25 people. And, and all of these changes went into effect at midnight, eight and a half hours after he made this right. statement. And, you know, so, and then, ironically, he, he, he went out and put out a press release saying that he's calling on Congress to pass more legislation to authorize federal funds to assist restaurants, right? Right. So, you know, so many wonderful locally owned restaurants yeah. are massively impacted. 
And we'll have um, to end at that today, unfortunately, because we're out of time. But uh, I just talked to one of those restaurant owners the other day. He said, you know, we're shutting down for the rest of the year. He has four different restaurants. And, and he said, you know, if, if we don't get some help, he said, we, we got some real problems on our hands. And that and, and unfortunately, that's where we leave this today. But to be continued, Senator, always a pleasure to have you on our show. Uh, we look forward to your insights into all this, and uh, hopefully things will get better before they get worse. So thank you again for joining us this morning, Senator Chris, Kristen Phillips. Absolutely. Phillips. It's all about transparency and accountability, and we continue to work on that, Gary. Amen, so amen, much. and amen to that.